My guest today is Hatan Shabukshi. Hatan, Hello. how are you? Hi, Dave. How's it going? It's going really well. Tell me, Hatan. I know the answer to this question, but what do you do? I am a senior software engineer. I work for um, Microsoft, and I work on the CSE team. CSE is basically commercial software engineering. Uh -huh. yeah, and I knew that because we're on the same team. We are on the same team, and we work together. Yeah, so. we work together all week here in Frankfurt, Germany. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, and we did some stuff around uh, DevOps. Yes. And uh, you taught me about a DevOps tool that I was not aware of before. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. Sure. So the tool that we had talked about is one that is called Terraform. Terraform is a tool that really helps with infrastructure as code. Infra Would you like me to go into def that? First define infrastructure as code. Sure. Infrastructure as code is basically defining all of your resources, whether they're in the cloud, on-prem, as code. And what I mean by that is you have it documented in a script somewhere that you that you execute. So if you'd like to launch a VM, for example, you wouldn't necessarily go to a web UI or go to some sort of system, click some buttons, go through an actual wizard. Yeah. Next, Instead, next finish. Yeah. The what? Next, next finish. That's next, what, next finish. That's what uh, I thought infrastructure engineers do all day long. I thought you were. I thought you were saying next, Hatan, finish. Come on, we're oh, done. No. I was like, wow, this is a short interview. <laughs> okay. Just a job description <laughs> of, uh, when I used to Thank be a you. network administrator. But yes, <laughs> and you know that's exactly it. Next, 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 and you're waiting. And you know maybe you want to go to lunch, yeah. so you pick the wrong option because you're there in a rush, right? Or maybe you know the right options, but then you're on vacation and they ask me to do it and I'm like, which of these options do I pick? Is it uh, this one or that one? So there's a lot of knowledge that you have about you know, how to build an actual server or VM or whatever. Oh. The, so that's kind of the old way to do it. The nice thing about infrastructure as code is all that information which is in your head is now in a script somewhere. So that if you're on vacation, I can ru run that script. And it's just a really nice way to one, document what you've done, two, ensure that every time you actually run this, you get the same output. When you're dealing with an actual human, maybe there'll be little, there, there will be little variations because, you know, people forget. Maybe this time they go, maybe I should pick this option. So you may get a little bit of inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. when, it's, when it's written down as an actual script that you execute, it's the same thing every it's single more time. more consistent. It's more repeatable. Exactly. And, and that's the key there. Every time. Exactly. And there's one more thing I want to add as well. It's a nice way to kind of track changes over time. What I mean by that is, let's say you kind of managed things the old way, where you went through the UI and you picked all these options. Mm -hmm. Then let's say, Dave, you went on vacation and this is your VM, and I went in and said, I'm gonna change a few things, because I mean, I think it should be this, this, and this. Okay. And I completely wrecked the whole thing. All right. You or get back. Or maybe make it better. Or maybe make it better. But regardless, let's say you get back and then you're like, wow, this VM is either super awesome or, oh my God, what did you do? Mm -hmm. But you, you know, let's go with, you know, option A. It's much better now, and you wanna know what I did so yeah. that you can do the same thing. I could just say, I don't know. I, you know what? I was in a rush and I just picked a few things. I, uh, I, I don't know exactly what I did. Code, so it's documented. Exactly, okay. so that you can, so that you can have an actual diff. Um, you can have an actual diff, so you can look through a tool like um, GitHub or whatnot, oh, which you can actually push that into source control. Yeah, make that part of your exactly. Uh, and we didn't, artifacts. and we didn't talk about that yet, which is the idea that if it's in source control, you can now track changes just mm -hmm. like you could with your application code. Oh, okay. Sorry, yeah, it's a little bit of a rant, but yep. No, no, that's great. Uh, then it's, if it's option B, if it happens to be that uh, it broke something, I can roll back exactly. to last Tuesdays before it was broken. Exactly. Much more easily. Exactly, just like code. The whole idea is we have all this awesome tooling and all these things that we've built around source code, but now we've got that as well for our infrastructure. Okay, and so, uh, Terraform mm -hmm. is a tool for building infrastructure as code. Yes, sir. Uh, is it for anything, or is it just for cloud computing? It what? is for it is for anything. So the way that it works is it's basically architected so that 
there's the actual language um, syntax, but there's a bunch of Terraform providers. And um, I don't know all of them off the top of my head, but I, knew, but I know that they do support both on-prem as well as um, cloud systems. So they've got a whole bunch, you know, we, we can go to the website and look, but I know for sure that they definitely support Azure as well as bare metal servers. All right, and tell me, walk me through the process of how you uh, use Terraform to do infrastructure as code. Of course, so the, um, you what you need to do is you need to basically begin with kind of defining your your resources. So you've got a file that says here are what my resources are going to look like. Let's say this is in in Azure. You might have, for example, VNet definitions. You might have VM definitions. You might have a whole bunch of things in there. So that's one file, or that could be an actual multitude of files. You could also have variables. Those are basically inputs. So things like, you know, um, this is the resource name or the resource group name I want, and you know, um, how many subnets do I want? I, so I have my source code that basically defines all those things, and I basically need to run that. So in order for me to run that, there's a few things I need to do. Mm -hmm. First, I need to do what's called a, well, you know, first I need to go get the tool. So I basically download Terraform, set it up locally. Okay. Then Is it free? Uh, it yes, it is free. There is, I believe, an actual enterprise version. I don't know what the what the enterprise features are, okay. but if you just want the actual basic Terraform, which works really well, all, right. all the features you want are there. So they have a, fr a freemium model. A freemium model. So you basically get the code, and I think it is actually open source as well. Mm -hmm. So you basically get the application, run the application, and the first thing it is going to do is it is going to look at your file and say. What is the backing the backing provider? So let's say I pick Azure. Okay. It is going to say, okay, well, let me go and get the bits so that I can talk to to Azure. Then it is going to try and go look at my subscription. Well, no, actually that is not true. It is just going to get the bits and that's it. Then I do what's called a Terraform plan. What that does is it looks at the actual code I have and says, okay, this is what you want me to do. You mm -hmm. want me to, you know, build a VNet. You want me to do all this stuff. And it's important to also mention that the actual Terraform file isn't a, it, it's not code in the sense of you're not defining execution steps. You mm -hmm. aren't saying, you know, do this and then this and then this and then this. What, in, what you're doing instead is you're actually defining the desired state of your infrastructure. Hmm. So you say, I want a VM, I want a VNet, I want all this stuff. So okay. that's what the code does. So what the actual tool does for you is it'll go to your Azure environment, look at it and say, does this match what I have locally? Hmm. Or, or does this match what is in the source code file? Okay. If it, you know, and then if it does match, then it's not going to do anything. It, it is going to say, you wanted an actual VM. You got a VM that is called blah, blah, blah with the same option. So I'm not going to do anything. Okay. But let's say you did not have a VM. Then what it does, it says, okay, I'm going to go generate a VM for, um, for you. And then you have to do what's called Terraform apply, which is, okay, now go and actually do the thing for me. And there's all kinds of things about saving, um, saving state and just making sure that the actual tool knows what's up in the cloud. So mm -hmm. there's a lot more to it, but okay. So this is more of a declarative language than an imperative exactly. language, like it, uh, uh, imperative like C sharp or JavaScript. Like C sharp or JavaScript, it's exactly. More like, like XML or JSON or, or SQL is a very kind uh, of yeah. yeah. So it. Yeah, and um, does it, it, what, what does the code look like? Is it is it similar sure. to another language that I would so, know? So uh, not really. The code is in a language called HCL. HCL okay. is basically is basically HashiCorp configuration language. HashiCorp is the company that makes the actual tool. So, I see. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and now uh, you mentioned infrastructure code and and, and cloud computing. I yeah. immediately thought of. ARM templates, yep, ARM, ARM templates. templates. Yep, um, and that's what I use. Okay, perfect. Um, why would I if I ha if I have that? Why do I need or why would I want Terraform? That's a great question. Terraform does 
the same thing ARM does. And what I mean by that is they are both they are both com competing tools and kind of do the same thing. With that said, the way that they do the thing, which is infrastructure as code, it is a little bit different. ARM uses JSON, whereas Terraform uses HCL. So just from a coding point of view, it's a little bit different. Many people, including myself, find HCL easier to read as opposed to a super long JSON file. Okay. With that said, there's also the the argument about um, HCL being um, you know being multi-cloud, whereas you can use you can use Terraform to basically target other systems, other clouds and whatnot. With that said, it's not 100% multi-cloud, multi-environment because although you are still writing HCL, you are essentially invoking um, re um, resource calls or you're calling functions that are gonna be dependent on the actual environment that you're gonna run in. Does that make sense? Uh, I think so. So it is multi-cloud, but you can't use the same code for AWS as you can for Azure, as you can for Google. Is that what you're saying? You have to write slightly different code for each one of them. Exactly. But as long as you, all three of those. Exactly. But as long as you kind of understand the general structure, then you can easily port your code, okay. adapt your code. But, but yes, it's not like you can take one file and just run the same file on all three. That won't work. Okay. Uh, are you using this in production? Um, right now, I'm working with a few customers that are on their way there. Huh. Um, I've worked at jobs before where we are, where we were actually using it in 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 production. Yes. Can you give me a scenario that you successfully used Terraform? <coughs> sure. So um, one was to basically set up it um, set up infrastructure for a new team. So they had an application. They said, we want to go launch the application. So all their infrastructure was set up as actual infrastructure as code. Mm -hmm. And we used and we used Terraform as the basic mechanism to launch all of this, which actually leads into a you know thing called GitOps. Have you heard of that? I have not. So is there that? is DevOps, but there's also GitOps, which is kind of DevOps. It's just a different word. But yeah. GitOps is this idea that all of your infrastructure is checked in as code, mm -hmm. and you and you have a bunch of automation and build pipelines to automatically verify and also deploy that infrastructure if there is a change. So the idea being, if I want to launch a new VM, all I have to do is go add it to the actual Terraform script, check it in, and then you have a bunch of automation that will see that through. It's really cool in the sense of you no longer have to go bug anybody. You can just check the code in, and if the automation is done right, it'll just kind of flow through the system. You can have all the different checks you want. Maybe you want to have manual intervention. Maybe you don't. It's up to you and your particular organization. This sounds like just an extension to continuous integration, continuous it, deployment, CI/CD. It's yes, except continu um, CI/CD. Most of the time, people talk about it in terms of your application code, right. whether it's your website, whether it's. But here it's for infra infrastructure. Exactly. So this is the same thing, just applied towards infrastructure. Thanks. You got it, sir. All right, cool. Uh, this is fascinating stuff. Wonderful. Um, there's a lot of people here want to dive into it. Where's awesome. a good place to start to learn more? So there's a lot of really good options. If you just go look online and just um, search for, and you just do a quick search for HashiCorp, Terraform. You'll find a lot of good resources. Um, we've got a bunch of resources on the actual Microsoft documentation site about using it with Azure. But if you go to the actual HashiCorp site, they have a bunch of really good docs for all the clouds out there. Very cool. And you have an online presence, do you not? I do. Sure. Somewhat. So, oh. yes. Uh, yeah, that's a good. Yeah, I yes, I do. Pressure's on the there you stuff. go. So, I do have an actual Twitter account that is semi-active it is my first name so it's at hatan h-a-t-t-a-n but yeah great time thanks so much thank you dave this was awesome
I have no friends, so I use technology to make them. <laughs>